fun. And welcome everybody to today's Flying with Angels show. This is a special um, show which is, is to be an interview with Sam Jones who is the, the founder of a, a Facebook group called uh, Waterside Warriors, Type 1 Diabetes Awareness. Now, I've asked her to come on. Um, she's a very special lady, and I, I've met her daughter. She's lovely. She's my daughter's goddaughter. She's big huggies. And I've asked her to come on so she can share about the Waterside Warrior group <coughs> that she has um, created, which is very good for helping everybody. Now, Sam is based in the southern UK, but I'm hoping and I know that the information that we share on this show will help other people or, or people who are only just finding out they have type 1 diabetes or their children have, and worldwide it will help people as we know this show goes out all over the world. So I've asked Sam to come on and talk about it. It will be the first in a series of special interviews that Fine With Angels are going to do. And we hope that Sam will come back at a later date and explain more. I will just say what um, some of what Sam has written on a, a blog. My daughter was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes on the 12th of May 2016, aged three years old. This was probably the worst time in my life. And then living with the condition was a massive change for us as a family. I joined lots of Facebook groups for help and advice to try to help me as a parent deal with the, her condition. She suffers the physical aspects of the condition and I the mental and emotional aspect. Anyhow, a struggle it was and as a mum will always be a worry for me. I set up the Facebook group. Initially this group was in order that I could meet other parents of type 1 diabetes and also adults living with the condition within the Waterside area. I was interested and am interested to learn the impact of this condition throughout the lives of sufferers. The Facebook group turned into a support network for parents and also adults with type 1 diabetes. This led me to the realization of the very little support that there is for this condition. So with that, I'd like to welcome Sam. Hello, Sam. Hello. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's wonderful to have you. And um, would you like to tell us a bit more about your story? Yes, thank you. Um, so as you've mentioned there, Holly, my daughter, uh, was diagnosed at age three. Um, fortunately for us, I knew the symptoms of type 1 diabetes due to some um, um, first aid training that I'd had in, in my job role. Well. Um, so I knew some of the symptoms to look out for. Um, not that I was looking out for it, of course, because you never think your child is going to become unwell. Um, symptoms then um, that she had at the beginning was um, she was extremely lethargic. I thought as a mum that she was just being cuddly and wanted to sit next to me on the sofa and cuddle up, um, which maybe it was a little bit of that as well. Um, drinking uh, substantial amounts of fluids. Um, I don't mean just a couple of sips. Um, in, in, if you were to hold a pint glass up, she would, at three years old, easily drink a pint of drink and then want more. Um, we also, she had the urge to eat, eat, eat anything sweet to get it into her body. And I'll explain the reasons why for that in a moment. Um, uh, another big indication was at the, during the night times, and she wasn't dry at this time. She was only three um, at night time, but she was going to bed and wetting she'd be in bed an hour and I'd be changing the sheets um and that was through a pull-up as well so um and that was 
a, a, a big indication. The final thing for me was um, she lent in to give me a kiss and a cuddle. And I just smelt this pear drop smell on her breath. Um, and it actually sent a shudder, a literal shudder down my spine. And at that moment, I, I felt I knew um, that she had she had the condition. Um, I took her to the doctors and asked them to do a diabetes test on her, which is a simple sugar test in the urine. Um, they did that and it come back as inconclusive. Um, so at that point, they did a, what they call a finger prick test where they check to see how much sugar is in the bloodstream. Um, and they did that and it was extremely high. Fortunately for me, we caught it early enough. We were able to walk into hospital that very day and start treatment straight away. Um, some people don't understand and don't know the symptoms, which is understandable, really. Um, they don't know the symptoms of diabetes, and therefore it gets to the point where your body, and I, maybe I should explain a little bit what happens. Your pancreas um, produces insulin. The insulin, in a basic, basic way of explaining it, the insulin will, when you eat sugar or carbohydrates, um, the insulin in your body that your pancreas produces breaks down the sugar and turns that into energy and, and sends it to the muscles so your body can work efficiently. Um, if your pancreas isn't working, which is what type 1 diabetes is, is where the pancreas doesn't work anymore and doesn't produce insulin. If it doesn't work, what happens is the sugar can't transfer to energy um, and it just sits in the bloodstream. <clears throat> so the body's trying to fight and get energy from um, the bloodstream and the body is then trying to um, get sugar in as much as possible um, because the body's not working efficiently. So what happens is, unfortunately, is the sugar just sits in the bloodstream and then the body is very clever, as we all know, um, the body tries to dispel it by other means. So that's by making you drink so that it comes out in the wee um, and the body will dispel it as quickly as possible in that way. And also in the breath, it comes out in the breath and that's where the pear drop smell comes from. Um, unfortunately, for some people, if they can't find, if, they, if the symptoms are not known, the sugar builds up in the bloodstream um, and then it makes the blood acidic -y. Um, uh, and it can put actually the person, the sufferer, and it doesn't have to be a child, it can be an adult as well, it puts the sufferer into a coma. Sorry, my computer's just gone a bit skewy. Yeah, fortunately we didn't get that get, get to that point. Um, and the simple um, thing that to treat it is to have insulin injections which is simple, but for a three-year-old, it was quite um, hard for her to accept um, at the time. So, stop me if I'm rambling. So we went into no, hospital. No, you're doing very well, Sam. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so we went in. It very interesting, and oh. thank you for explaining as well. Oh, that's okay. It just makes more sense. Uh, the, the sort of trying to eat all the time and then you know, she, she used to literally cry if I said no to giving her sweets. I don't mean just like me. I mean proper crying because she was desperate. Her body needed energy, but her muscles weren't getting it. The other thing that happens when it gets to that point is the body starts drawing on all the fat reserves um, and it turns it into the energy it needs basically to survive. Um, once it's used all the fat reserves, it starts on the muscles. And that's when it starts to become dangerous because obviously there's not much left then um, for the body to draw on. And that's when people start to fall into the comas um, and will end up in hospital um, after collapsing. Now, say, for instance, you're in, walking in the street and you see somebody collapsed on the floor and they're slurring their words. Your first instinct is, well, clearly they're drunk because, you know, they're rolling around the place, they're confused, they're not talking properly. Um, and I was taught actually to smell the person's breath. And it's a good tip for anybody that, anybody really, that if you think there's something wrong, 
and my computer went. And if you think there's some something wrong with somebody in the street, um, just as pleasant as maybe it isn't for some people, if you just check the breath, it's going to be one of the main indicators for you. There's no alcohol, but there's a sweet smell. They're probably in a diabetic coma, and you must ring 999 UK, 911 uh, America, um, and get that person help straight away. Um, yeah, it is. So it's, can there's um, sh sugar and insulin levels drop really quickly? Can they? So they could, yeah, so they've had their insulin, because you give them insulin, don't you, to yes. make up for the pancreas. And then like two hours later, they're on a, they're on a shopping trip and they're out. Can hmm. their insulin levels drop then, causing them to be unwell when they're out? Oh, yes. Um, that, again, is, uh, uh, yeah, another thing. So the insulin that we use in the UK, and I, I don't know if it's different in America, the insulin we use here lasts in the strip bloodstream for two hours. Um, so what we have to do here is carb count is what we call it. Um, so um, say, for instance, Holly would have a sandwich and a packet of crisps. So the bread would be, say, 15 grams of carbs. The, um, That's carbohydrates. Crisps, Sorry, yes, carbohydrates. And it's the full carbohydrates, not just the sugar bit, it's the, all of the carbohydrates because of the way the body converts it. Um, and 10 grams of carbs for uh, the crisps. So 25 grams of carbs she's going to have. Um, now, she would have so 18 grams of carbs for one unit of insulin. So for her, that would be about one and a half units of insulin for her. If I gave her the one and a half insulin, uh, units of insulin, and she only ate half the sandwich and half the packet of crisps, um, she potentially could drop into uh, have a hypo. Now, having a hypo, I always remember it, and this is what the nurses taught me. Um, if it's under floor, if it's under four, you'll hit the floor, so you're likely to collapse. Um, some people get very aggressive when their sugar's low. Again, the confused state. I've only ever seen Holly once in a state where she literally wanted to shut her eyes. Um, very scary experience for me as a mum. But at that point, I grabbed a juice carton, um, pure orange juice. She couldn't chew anymore because she was too far into the hypo so that means the sugars were under two um which is then a point you it's getting very serious for her um yeah again she could seize she could drop into a coma and worst case scenario is that she would die um if she if there's no intervention um the same for any diabetic so again it's something that you need to watch out just, for just to clarify a hypo mm -hmm. is when the sugar goes low yes and a hyper is when the sugar goes high that's right yes um and it and the high so a hypo will have immediate consequences and long-term consequences if you know you cause um organ damage etc with the hypo especially if you're having seizures and things and with a hyper you could sit at high levels for years um you wouldn't feel very good um particularly you'd feel lethargic and you know it's again it's your body's not getting enough insulin so all those symptoms will kick back in again but actually what it does is it causes a lot of long-term complications um for people so the nerves start to die the nerve endings the feet um now you may hear type ones and type twos where the feet people can't feel their feet anymore um, they can't feel literally can't feel themselves walking um, and it's very dangerous because it means that the blood flow isn't getting down to the the extremities the feet the toes um, and they could stand on something which again I've, I've got experience of this in a member of my family has type one um, not a blood relative um, so it's not connected to Holly but um, she has type 1 and she is having some serious problems with um, one of her f feet at the moment um, where it's led to amputations um, and ongoing problems for around the last two years. So being high all the time, um, hyper, um, can cause significant problems later on in the disorder, in the condition. So, yeah.
if it's well managed, well, then this is where the charity kicks in, really, because if it's well managed and it's well maintained, um, and you know you have enough insulin for the right amount of the right amount of carbohydrates, then um, it's a start. Um, unfortunately, there is there are a lot of different aspects that make the sugars rise and drop. Um, for instance, um, the weather. If it's really hot, Holly will burn sugar quicker, um, so she's likely to drop quicker. Um, if hormones for a, a female or, or a male, I, I suppose, I'm not 100 percent sure, but um, hormones will have um, an effect on the sugars. Um, if Holly goes swimming, her sugars doof, go through the roof. She may not have eaten anything, but that doesn't matter. Um, People also have the misconception that with type ones, you um, talking about food, you can't eat certain things. You can't eat sugar. You can't eat cakes. You're not allowed to do this or that it is caused by eating too much sugary foods. Type ones, that's not the case. Like say Holly was only three when she was diagnosed. And as a mum, the last thing you do is feed your kid cake and cake and cake. Um, now she gets it because she needs it to rise, raise her sugars. But um, it's an autoimmune disease and the body attacks the pancreas and kills it. Um, I know there's so much research going on. So hopefully one day we, we keep the hope and the faith that one day there will be a cure for her and people that suffer this condition. Um, but as I say, so many different things affect and impact on what her sugars are doing. Um, that it's, it is a hard condition to manage, but the tools are out there to help people. Um, how does Holly, uh, Holly manage at school? Ooh, OK, well, as a parent, I, I was extremely anxious to send her to school. Um, I did because I wanted to keep everything as normal as possible for her. Um, so if I explain a normal day for Holly, normal as in normal with living with her condition, um she so she would wake up but, uh, and back previously she'd wake up and we'd do a finger prick test so this is um a little test little finger prick um I haven't got one here because she's got her kit with her but a needle into the skin there to cause a little, little blood drop and then that would go onto a test strip uh, and that would show us how much what her blood sugars were at that time so say she'd wake up she be on uh, her blood sugar readings would be six or something like that which is in range by the way normal range for people is between four and seven um, I know that's different for American readings because they measure it differently um, and I, I don't know the American version of that so apologies um, to the American listeners um, I think that's in other countries as well it's measured differently so she'd have a finger prick test we'd work out the carbohydrates in her breakfast we'd put that in the meter and the meter would tell us how many units um, of insulin she would have so what what happened when she went to school because obviously she'd be having dinner at school the same process would happen the school thankfully have been so good um, I had to do a care plan for Holly explaining exactly what she needs when she needs it what to do in an emergency and also and I'm, I'm thankful to say this the local diabetic team um, at the Southampton General Hospital, um, they have diabetic nurses for the areas for the children. So our diabetic nurse is a chap called John, and he came round to my house um, when she was first diagnosed. He went to the school, um, he went to the childminders, he went to any of the caregivers that would be looking after Holly to train them in in what to do. Um, and of course, I'm on the end of the phone as well if they need any assistance. Very recently, in the last three weeks, she's had what we call a Dexcom G5 fitted. Amazing for me, something that she didn't particularly want. Um, but she finally said, OK, mum, we'll give it a go. And I, I think that's something that's come with her becoming a little bit older. It's a thing that goes on her arm, isn't it? Yeah, I don't, I don't know if you can see it. So it's, um, let me see, it's this little thing here. It's a transmitter yeah. and it's connected by, no, you probably won't be able to see it very well, but um, nope, here, it's my fingers over it. There, yeah. it's the little, basically it's a little pad with a needle 
like a filament that goes under the skin and then the transmitter fits on oh it's it's a godsend it really is because it um measures her blood glucose consistently so it's a continuous glucose monitor and it goes to a phone and then that phone transmits to me and let me just show you so i know at this moment in time her blood sugars are 9.4 and she's going down slowly i know that she hit hit a very high reading of 22 and i i actually saw that and thought oh my goodness um, but you can see they've obviously intervened now at school because she's dropped significantly um, and she's now down at 9.4, which is the correct thing to do. Um, so they've they've seen the reading at 22. They've given her some insulin and that's oh, what's made that's her good, sugar. It? Oh, it's amazing. Good? It's absolutely amazing. Now, that's the last 24 hours. Uh, it really, we, sh we would be in a completely straight line here. And obviously, Holly... Yeah, unfortunately, it's not quite like that for Holly at the moment. Um, one day, hopefully, we'll get to that sort of point where she's um, at a nice straight level. Um, very difficult to achieve. Lots of people do achieve it. I suppose it's her exercise in that as well. If she's running uh, around yeah. the playground. Exercise. That, would, that takes the sugar down, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah and... Down. And excitement as well. If she's really excited about something, her sugars go dosh. So if she was doing something that she particularly was really excited about at school, then yeah, she she would um shoot through the roof. And then you've got the you've got to be careful then because if you give insulin and then she calms down, you've got insulin and you've got her calming down, she's gonna go douche. So it's you know yeah. and you it's a bit of a to... science. Yeah, but that's, that's jolly good that you've got that communication. Oh, that's um, amazing. It, what yeah. happens as well is at night, because I, I was suffering as a parent, because I um, through the night, obviously your body's still working, um, and then all day we're feeding her, we're giving her insulin, we're feeding her, we're giving her insulin, and, drops, we're monitoring her, and then at night time, nothing. You know, she goes to bed for 12 hours. Her body's still working, her insulin's still working, but we're not feeding her. So last night at around, so it was about half past 10 at night, um, her sugars consistently. So that line was like this, like this, like this. And it got to about five and I thought, well, obviously it's not going to stabilise. I need to intervene before I go to bed. Um, and bless her little heart. I, I just have to like sort of stroke her head and say, Holly, your sugars are dropping. Mummy needs to feed you. And I literally break off bits of food and pop it into her mouth and then just stay with her while she eats it um sometimes she doesn't even open her eyes now um sometimes she'll think it's a straw and try and suck on the food because i, I give her juice as well um to raise her blood sugars it just boosts her blood sugars up so she can steadily come down through the night and we both get some sleep then um and that's why this bit of kit is very good um, because also what it does, if she drops below a certain rate, it alarms. Not only does it alarm on oh. her phone, but it alarms on my phone. Um, and if she rises above a certain rate, so I think it's about 14 or 15, I've got it set at. If it rises above that, it sirens. <laughs> um, so that, that wakes me up, which is kind of like a safety net for me to know that actually I'm going to be woken up if there's a problem. Um, yeah, that gives you the chance to have some sleep. Oh, it? yeah, because before I I used to wait, I used to have to wait up. Um, so I, if she was drop, drop, drop in, and then I'd give her food, I'd have to wait up about an hour to see if she would go up. And if she wouldn't go up, you know, I'd have to give her more food and then wait, and or less than insulin than wait. So it's a bit of a battle, really. This way, at least I can see if she's rising or going down. So yeah, it's really good. I'm really pleased and I'm actually getting some sleep and and she's managed better. So, yeah, it's a bit of a winner. Oh, in that respect. Good. Yeah. Um, the support group on yes. the show page, everybody, you've got the um, uh, the link to it. It's for Waterside Warriors Type 1 Diabetes. Oh. And it's um, on Facebook. Oh. It's a fake book. They've got a page and yes. a... Um, a like, <laughs> a like page and a, a group if you would like to 
contact them at all um, about anything, or you can contact me or Sam privately. Well, is that all right, Sam? Yeah, of course, of course. Please do. Um, th those the links are in the chat room, um, and um, Sam has a event coming up in the Hive area of Southampton, where she's doing. Well, it's hardy, isn't it? Where she's doing um, a fundraiser for waterside warrior type ones, and it's for the local business. Loc not local businesses. It's for the local. It's for the local people that have type one and the local hospitals that help them. So, would you like to say more about that, um, Sam? Yeah, certainly. Um, now, through Holly um, getting this condition and me becoming more aware of it, um, what happened is I, I started speaking to adults in this area that had type 1. Um, and we evolved, basically, from a Facebook group into um, the Waterside Warriors type T1 Diabetics um, charity. Now, we're unregistered at the moment because we're so very new. Um, However, it is something on our things to do. We, we have to ra raise a certain amount of money before we can register as a charity. Now, this event is set up for, as you can see, um, maybe or maybe not, if, <laughs> depending on how you're watching this, um, on the Sunday, the 1st of July, it's 2.30 to 5.30. And as you can see, it's got there's going to be glitter tattoos, kids' games. Um, there's going to be a, a big awareness table with two type 1 adults, type 1 diabetics adults running it. Um, we will have out some of these for people um, to take and they're just um, home collection boxes um, and a few other bits and pieces. Um, now, what we're raising money for is um, so the, lo the local children's diabetic team that look after Holly and many, many more. Um, from this area. Um, now they do a, it's the Southampton General Hospital, the paediatric diabetic diabetes team. They do day trips for the children to give the parents a break, give the children a bit of independence. Oh, yeah. No, um, no, but they, yeah, it's really good. Um, Holly, I don't think Holly's quite old enough to go yet, but um, what's happened is over the years, it's gone from being an overnight event for the children to having to be cut back for daytime. Um, because they just don't get the funding for it. And it's something that they like to do. Um, so you don't get the funding from the government for that. Um, so that's what we're raising money for them for. And obviously, if there's anything else they need assistance with, then, you know, they will use the money for that. Now, there's also the Fenwick Hospital in Lyndhurst that look after type 1 adults. Um, and they look after a lot of type 2s as well. And they raise a lot of they, they run a lot of courses, have a lot of awareness um, for the for type 2 diabetics as well. So although we're named type 1 diabetics, um, we, we won't, um, you know, discriminate based on what type you are. If you need help, then we will do what we can to help you. Um, and so we're promoting that hospital as well because they, they um, will have leaflets out about they run education groups for type 2s. They run education groups for type 1s because some people, you know, the, the treatment has changed since they were diagnosed. Uh, and there's also the West Hans Interactive Structure Education Refresher courses for type 2s that have been type 2 for a long time but need that extra bit of input to manage their diabetes different, better. So there's lots of fundraising going on for those two hospitals. That aside, um, I know from not my experience but experience with family members that the NHS now can't provide as much or don't provide as much funding for um, things like test strips for type 2s. I think they're about £25 a packet. So that, that's a lot of expense on the NHS, local um, GP surgeries, um, and type 2s just don't get that input um, like type 1 children. And type 1s don't also get the input either. So the idea was, um, after speaking to a few people, that we would raise money for people in our local community that don't have the money, um, or maybe they do have a little bit of money but can't afford every week or every month to spend £25, £50 on a sensor like Holly's got um, because they're replaceable at £50 and a lot of people are funding it themselves. So all they, all they have to do is um, fill in a form, explain what funding they need and what it's for. 
And then as a committee, we will look at whether we can help them financially. Um, obviously, it has to be for equipment. The other thing um, that we, we're looking at now is helping parents and carers of type ones, um, whether their children, their type one children are going, want to go on a school trip, but the support isn't in place for them and the parents can't necessarily afford to, to spend the money on, a, on staying in a bed and breakfast close by to them to offer the support. So lots of things are going on. And this this day is our first big fundraiser. So I'm very excited and very slightly nervous about it. Um, we've got the Tombola, over 100 prizes for that alone. And then we have um, the raffle. And we have some fantastic prizes for the raffle. A lot of them are local, um, you know, local vouchers from local businesses. So the community's really got involved. Um, which I'm so very pleased about as well. Um, you know, they're promoting us and a, we can promote them. Very much a community um, thing, on, on, which I think is wonderful. And yeah. I love you've managed to get so many prizes given to you yeah. for the draw and the tombola. And your local yeah. shops and businesses in your area have been fantastic. So. Oh, amazing. Uh, yeah. We've also, and there's a there's a, um, a gecko, a, a local printing company that have, that have done us a massive banner. They're doing us some T-shirts um, and, and that's all for free as well. They're doing that just out of the kindness of their hearts, which is just oh, amazing. Nice, isn't it? Yeah, the banner's fantastic. It's, you know, it's got our logo on. Also stickers they're doing for us. And all, all free. So it's just. Oh, you. it's that sort of thing <laughs> which really makes you. Yeah, they see, there are good people in the world, aren't they? There are good people yeah. in the world that aren't just doing things for, um, aren't just for doing themselves. things for them for themselves. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Be before we go, Sam, and we finish yeah. off, mm -hmm. how many of you are there on the committee that are running um, the Waterside Warriors? Oh, okay. Well, including me, there's about six of us at the moment. Um, hopefully, we will expand that. I think it'd be nice to have about 10 people because obviously we're all working and we've all got other commitments. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, but it's okay. We, we will work to what we can um, for as long as we can. Um, and obviously we will be taking uh, members in due course for um, the actual charity. Uh, it needs to be run like, like a charity, even though it's not registered at the moment. We're following all best practices in that respect with a treasurer, secretary, its own bank account. Um, yeah. And just on that note, uh, Lindsay, if you don't mind me saying, um, no. that in addition, in <laughs> because I'm, stage. I'm yammering. Got, yeah. Stage. <laughs> in addition to the Facebook, um, we have lots of other social media outlets as well. Um, obviously, social media plays a big part in everything these days. So we've we've got our web web address, which is www.watersidewarriors.co.uk. That will take you to the links for Instagram which is Waterside Warriors T1D. If you'd like to follow us, then please do. Twitter, <laughs> which is I, at I www. Know you were on all of it. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, and soon to be a YouTube account, I think. Um, so Twitter is at www.t1diabetics. Um, and then um, what else is there? Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. They're the main ones. Um, our email address, if you'd like to get in contact with us, um, is team at watersidewarriors.co.uk and finally for anybody in the UK that'd like to speak to any member of the team you can call and leave a message on 02380 181106 and finally <laughs> if you'd like <laughs> yeah sorry if you'd like to um if you'd like to donate to to us then there's um ways that you can do that via um facebook but we also just set up a paypal account so if you just one second and i'll find the paypal address so that is the same it's so the paypal and if you do it as friends then the donation will come to us it's team at watersidewarriors.co.uk any donations will go into the charity and will be gratefully appreciated and accept it. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Sam. So there, that I was going to just bring that up, but oh, sorry. Sam has done it. <laughs> Sam has done it for it. Sam, it's been wonderful to have you on. 
Have yes, a lovely you, rest of the day. Oh, yes. I'd like you to come back if you can after the fundraiser. Of course. And you can let us know how much you raised, but you can let us know how it went. Yes. And, um, I'm very excited what a for it. Oh. day it was. I will be down there. I wasn't going to yes. say this, but I am going to say it. I will be down there doing card readings um, if anybody would like to come down and meet me as well. And you can meet Sam. She's lovely. Um, I haven't put pictures of Holly up because she is um, a little girl. And where we go worldwide, you have to be careful as to where your photos go. And um, But Holly is a beautiful little girl. And, She'll be there on the day, so... Yeah, oh <laughs> she, she's mm. five now. So um, if you're in the Southampton area, come on down. And if you're not in the Southampton area, please follow Sam and contact her. And if you'd like to donate something, um, please do. So uh, with that, I am now going to um, say namaste, everybody. And thank you very much for joining us. Namaste, Sam. Namaste. And do you know what namaste means? No clue. <laughs> <laughs> the light in me honours the light in you. <laughs> oh, I love it. Very beautiful. Um, so it's very good. So I'm going to say goodbye and thank you very much. I'm going thank to you, stop, the re stop the recording, Sam, but don't okay. go away. All right. Thank you.